All right, guys, here we go. Shading clothes part two. So just right off the bat, you can obviously see this is a part two. So if you feel like this video is missing any preliminary stuff that you think I'm leaving out, I suggest you go check out part one and then come back to this one. So straight to the point, we're talking about dresses today, particularly this dress. How do we shade and draw this dress? Now, not to go into too much explanation, but let's just take a really quick reminder and look at shapes, all right? Not to remind you of your Sesame Street days, but we do need to remember that everything that we're gonna be drawing, again, regardless of what it is, in this case, the dress is built up of shapes, and you guys should probably see that one of these shapes already looks like the dress we're about to draw. If you need a hint, it's this one. So side by side, you should be able to see that uh, we're seeing a lot of these shapes in here, but not only the shapes, but the shading that I created on here is really being reflected in a lot of these folds on this particular dress. So again, knowing this, this thing to the right here is really gonna help you figure out how to shade what's on the left. I'm gonna tr keep driving that point home. Now, the only other thing that is necessary when you are drawing something like clothes is to understand the basics of the form underneath, which is the structure and what is technically holding up the clothes because it is being worn by a body. So if we just in general think of what's going on under there, we have some basic ideas, right? And we want to be able to think about that because it helps us to know when the fabric starts falling and when we can kind of think of things of like what is in front and then where the fabric goes and starts to turn around the form, right? So we have a little bit of an understanding of foreground and we're starting to see some, you know, I'm doing some air quotes here, background. For the purpose of this video, we are just focusing on this section in the box here, erase her arm parts that are in there. And we're really just focusing on that dark gray or maybe like, I don't know, like an off gray, bluish color, whatever you wanna call that dress that section. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna draw a little light indication of that body form underneath, and then we're gonna build a dress on top of it. All right guys, so here we go. So I do wanna say this part is pretty sped up. Again, you know, I've said this in the past with a couple of my videos. This video isn't really meant to be a figure drawing video necessarily about the body. So if you do want that information, if you're not sure how I'm creating this or what I'm basing this off of, I'm gonna link some of those videos below in the description. I'll also put a little pop-up right there somewhere around this point for you guys to check out those proportion videos that I do have. I do wanna really kind of put in here that this isn't necessarily something that needs to be anatomically correct or anything like that. Realistically, if you wanted to, if you've seen the last video and you saw my, my, my tubes that I did for the leg, you could do some tubes here. You could just do some quick stick figuring here, anything you want. Um, by now, those of you ha that have been rocking with me for a while, you know I'm very detail oriented. I couldn't stop myself. I had to do it. So I went in and fixated on the detail. Again, this is why I sped through this part really quick. Really just go in and just knock something out super quick. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're following along with what I'm doing, we're not even going to be seeing these feet that I'm drawing right now and spending way too much time on. We're gonna eventually be zooming into this picture. And like I said, just focusing on everything in that red square. However, I just wanted to leave this part in for you guys if you do care about this. One thing I'm gonna say, if you are drawing this on a traditional paper, make sure you're doing it nice and light because we're gonna be drawing over it. So if you can push it back, you're working digitally, lower that opacity. Now we have to jump into some of that dress form. And again, this video isn't about really drawing Clothes. This is going to be about taking the next step in shading clothes. So, you know, again, excuse me if this part goes a little bit fast too. Um, I do have it pretty sped up, but I I didn't have it like crazy fast because I do. This is part of the process, right? So essentially, what we're drawing here is a nice cone or um, a bell shape or whatever you want to consider it. Um, something I do want to emphasize while we're still in this phase: keep it simple. Please, 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 please keep it simple. You're always gonna find that you're gonna have a better, more accurate drawing if you just stay simple in the beginning, because then you can judge this shape instead of judging something that you just spent an hour drawing that you're not gonna wanna finish. Now, that being said, I looked at my shape and I seen something and you guys might be noticing something too. 
My dress is a little shorter and I made my figure in relative terms compared to the picture a little wider. That's completely fine. I don't have to stick exactly, exactly like the reference. Um, I'm still gonna get the same effect. I can still use the reference to create my dress. Um, everything is essentially going to be the same. So that being said, if you guys have a problem with that, um, you can go ahead and make those changes, make it longer, make it shorter, whatever you wanna do to fix yours up. But again, all I wanna say is that, you know, I said this with the jeans too when we we're drawing the pants, it doesn't have to be exact because no matter what, once this picture goes into motion and this, this uh, girl takes one step, the dress will never fold like this again. So us having to take this literally like second moment with this dress and be crazy accurate with it, is ridiculous, right? So, you know, just kind of think of it like that. There's always going to be variations and differences and that's 100% allowed in your work. It's, you know, it's your creative choice there. So now what I'm going in is I'm going to finalize my shape a little bit and I'm really sticking to the outside edges. Um, reason I'm doing this is again, I want a solid shape that I'm looking at that I can then go in and fixate on and detail and whatever I want to do. <clears throat> but it's always going to be more beneficial to have a solid outline shape that I can then go in and finish. If I don't end up liking the outside, it's much less, uh, I don't know, sad to erase um, just the outside and go in and fix it real quick than if you were to draw all these folds on the inside. Now, since we got our shape, went ahead and zoomed in on our picture here so we can really just zoom in on those details. Um, now I am going into my interior and we're kind of drawing it out. Again though, um, I know I talk about getting fixated on details and drawing and all that stuff, but you wanna remember if you saw the last video, don't get carried away with this part too much. Uh, if you're detail oriented like me, completely okay but just try to remind yourself at the end of the day, none of this line work is gonna be showing. Remember, we're here to do really detailed shading on clothes. So what's gonna be holding our lines is our value work. And so that's what we're gonna put our emphasis on. All right, now we are getting into it. The video slowed down a little bit, but I did spend quite some time on this. so. Um, if you do notice it going a little fast, um, don't worry, it does slow down a little bit as I start working. All I'm doing now, and you guys should know this by now because this is in all of my clothes figures in the last video, is we're throwing down some value. Just throw it down any shade, just stick to a mid-tone, don't go too dark, don't go too light. Maybe you can have a separation in the background here. So I wanted my background to be lighter because my dress in the reference stands out as darker. Those were the only two separations I currently made. So now what I'm gonna do is go in and start to play with my shape a little bit here. So you wanna start with a solid basis. Um, again, if you guys care about what I'm doing in Photoshop terms, I'm using the opacity brush, which is why you can see it looks a little splotchy in places and different values in some areas. Um, this is because I like the variation. It gets me from lighter to darker, no matter what shade I'm on. If you can't see what I'm doing too right now with that little invisible cursor, I'm going in and I'm cleaning up my edges. Um, it's really hard to see against you know the outline right now, but I'm cleaning up my edges. A couple things I'm going to be doing um, that unfortunately you can't do if you're working traditional, but things you can consider if you are working traditional is I'm gonna push back my line work. So we're gonna lower the opacity on the line work a little bit. Um, and I just kind of went in, erased some edges, and cleaned up some edges. Now we get to kind of lay in some tone. Now I'm gonna warn you guys, um, this is gonna look kind of scratchy and it might look kind of bad at first. Um, and I think if you've ever seen an artist maybe that you admire or inspires you and you've seen their process, there's a going, there's always a stage where you're like, there's no way this is gonna turn into a good picture. And when it comes to like, detailing things and shading things, you have to get comfortable with that zone. Really quick, if you guys don't know what Photoshop, if you never experimented with Photoshop or maybe like any digital software, what I just did right there is I just selected my shape, my 
layer, which is the dress color. And then keeping it selected, I just hid those little marching ants looking thing. Um, so now I can't color outside of my line because I'm a five-year-old and I have to do that for myself. No, but um, it's a lot easier, obviously, if I don't have to worry about that, right? I can keep my edges nice and clean. And so that's why I do that. Um, a lot of artists that I know that work digitally don't like to do that to themselves, but hey, to each their own. Um, so anyway, so we're going in and what I'm doing is I'm recognizing the fact that the value I laid down is not the darkest value. Okay, it's also not going to be the lightest value. It's my mid-tone. Um, so what I'm now doing is I'm going in and I'm going to start pushing back my darks. Remember, everything that's dark is going to be getting pushed away from you in space. It is the absence of light. It's not being hit by the light, which means it's not sticking out, which means it's therefore further away from you. Right. And when I say further away, I literally just mean further away from the brightest point of this dress where it's nice and highlighted. I don't mean miles away. Um, so that helps me to really think about like, OK, I'm playing with perspective in a way here, right? I'm pushing things forward and I'm pushing things back. Um, and I always go into my darks before I go into my lights. Um, you can generally see in this picture, and this is usually how it goes too. There's a lot more darks and shadows than there are lights. Um, especially when you start from a mid-tone. So we're just kind of finding the general darkness and I'm going in and finding my dark shadow shapes. Are they gonna stay like this? No, not at all. Um, a lot of them are gonna get darker, some are gonna get lighter, some are gonna turn into gradients, right? Um, lots of room to improve and to change and to grow here. Again, let's just call this the ugly phase of a detailed drawing. You kind of have to get ugly to find that beauty within your picture here, okay? Let's throw some philosophical art out there for you. But what we're really doing is we're giving ourselves that map, okay? So now that we've found that, you've maybe added some details. You can see on the right side, <clears throat> I had a little bit of the seam detail. And Another thing that that is playing up to is it's more like there's light on the right side and there's no light on the left side. Um, so you're going to see a little more detail on the right side. You can play that up if you want or not. Um, just something that I chose to. Now I'm going to go in and start pushing my darks. Um, this is going to be my first push into the darkest darks. So I do want to realize that this might not be as dark as it's going to um, go, it could be pushed darker. So we don't want to go with that absolute black. In fact, please do not take absolute black. Um, obviously, if you're working with charcoal, you just have a black tool, but you need to work that in slowly and slowly. Same with graphite. Same if you're doing color pencils. If you're doing paint, make sure you're mixing a very dark gray. Do not work with just straight black. You always want to give yourself wiggle room. If you go full black, there's no wiggle room, especially once it dries, if you're doing something like acrylic, right? So again, I know I just kind of like said that like three times right there, but again, just be wary of what you're pushing. Now you're going to notice that like circle kind of popping up there a lot. I'm using my color selector and I'm pushing the values back and forth. Okay. Um, I'm kind of like, looking over at my reference, I'm seeing that little glimmer of light on that side, noticing that most of it is really in shadow, right? Or maybe like a darker version of the mid-tone. And so I'm kind of just pushing it back and forth. I'm testing it out. I'm seeing what do I like? Um, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to look just like the reference. So maybe I like a little more of a highlight on there. I want it to look a little more full in shape. While we're talking about that, and I'm kind of doing the same thing here, pushing back and forth, <clears throat> Something to acknowledge is what kind of material is this? Because that's going to help you a lot if you can kind of separate materials and understand how some materials react, they interact, they, how they move, how they hold their shape. Um, if we take a close look at this, to me, it looks like some sort of like almost like wool or like a wool cotton blend or something. It's very thick. You can see it's like these, these ruffles are coming down but they're almost struggling to 
to fold against each other. They're really trying to hold their shape and not kind of come together and ruffle. So after you know a little bit more about the fabric, you can kind of tell what kind of patterns you're going to be getting. And all I mean by that is, you know, just to kind of put into context, if this were like a really thin silk dress, it would just kind of drape right down dramatically off of her hips. There would be no fray out to the side or if there were very little, right? So you just want to be thinking that everything has different weight. Everything has a different kind of hold um, in what you're working on. So looking back at what we are working on, you can see I am pushing my values and I'm reshaping things too. So I do want to really kind of emphasize this. I'm not sticking to the drawing underneath. In fact, I can barely see that drawing underneath anymore. Maybe only in a few places or at the edges. I'm reshaping things. I'm looking over at my reference. I'm noticing how some, some things kind of like taper in and then they get a little bit wider again. Kind of like, a, for lack of a better word, like they're kind of like a bell bottom. Um, look to them or like a trumpet look to them where they kind of like go in and then like whoosh out. Um, I'm not making fa finger shapes over here as I'm voiceovering and realizing that no one can see anything I'm doing. But anyway, so going in and reshaping everything to how I see it and how I want it to look at the end of the day. Um, now that we kind of have things pretty defined, the shape is looking believable. We can really play. This is like it is now our playground to push and pull whatever we want. So you guys can see I'm adding in my darks. I'm really starting to push um, the one I'm put adding in right now. The little kind of flare out next to it. That's kind of like the focal point of what this dress. The in like this is like that midsection. And this midsection right here is gonna make those two ruffles really just kind of come out, especially when we add that highlight. So the darker I push this, again, remember there's more distance I'm adding into this section of the dress. So it's making it appear as if it's going in further, maybe touching the leg, right? Um, Cause the section is going in towards the body to really push out those ruffles, right? To really make them look flowy, and dress-like and elegant and any of those other fashion words that kind of make us think of a dress in this type of way. <clears throat> now on that subject too, I wanna to emphasize that the three pockets of darkest shadow that you're seeing are where I am now, the one to the left, which does need to go a little bit darker on my picture. Um, and I, I, th I think I go in there and work on that. And then obviously the one to the farthest left. The reason being is from whatever lighting source this picture was being taken from, <clears throat> it's to the right. Or, you know, if we were her, it would be to her left. So we want to show that in our picture. Showing light and where light is coming from is what value is made of. It's not really um, a matter of wanting it or not wanting it to show light in your picture. If there is no light, then there would be an absence of value. Um, or if it's all light from every single angle, top, bottom, left, right, quarter angles, like this would just be a flat dress. You wouldn't actually see any of these details. Um, so remember you're, when you're drawing with value or you're shading with value, it's literally a play between how much light you're showing how much shadow you're showing. All right, so you guys can start to see this comparison now because I'm kind of working left to right here a little bit in my picture where you can see that like everything from that big ruffle kind of in the middle and left, it's, it's looking pretty there. It's like we're seeing the shapes we're starting to really feel these tubes come out of this dress form, right? These these ruffles that are cr being created. And you look on the right, a little scratchy, a little, you know, like not so sure of the three dimensional shape. So it's a good it's a good contrasting zone right now. You can kind of stop and look and compare 
um, what you're doing to where you're going, that kind of a thing, and push forward from there. <clears throat> Now, as you get into the more light areas, it can get a little tricky for sure, because like this area I'm working in right now, this kind of like canal area, we do get a good dark zone right here, which is gonna be all our information. But then even that pocket, um, which naturally would be dark, but is capturing, it's capturing a good deal of light here and reflected light off of some of the ruffles, it's, it's lit up. Um, so we don't have the ability to just kind of throw in a darker value there just for the sake of pushing it. You're gonna see me working dark on this side, but pretty. I'm gonna be sticking at least a few values lighter on a value scale, right? From the darkest dark that I've put down so far. I might come in with some of that dark just to kind of like put, throw it in and then I'll immediately lift it out with like a slightly lighter color. Just again, mixing adding values, it's kind of a push and play thing. So <clears throat> you always want to be kind of like testing, testing the water, so to speak, right? Where like you push this in, see if it looks like it went too far. And if you created something that looks like a hole, you gone too far. Because remember, this is all one piece of fabric together. There's nothing that's going to be a hole about it, except for out, like underneath the dress right where her legs can come out because that's how the dress works so she was able to get into it but the, f the form that we're looking at right now nothing is a hole in here it's all a piece of fabric that we can't get anything through and so again you want that's another reason why you want to be careful about how dark you're going so around now is when I start to think about adding in some highlights. Now, what I'm not going to do is rush straight to the brightest of brights, okay? We're not going to, for sure not going to hit up straight up white. Um, this is a fabric that is not going to go straight white. The only things that are going to have straight white reflection are going to be things like um, metallic, latex, plastic, those kind of things. So if you don't want your dress to look like that, do not go pure white, okay? It sounds like I'm repeating myself. Last time I was saying don't go pure dark or don't go pure black. Now I'm telling you in the highlights, don't go pure white. Really just stick a couple values lighter than your mid-tone. Put those in, feel it out. Maybe you wanna start pushing around some of your values, pushing your mid-tone, um, bringing back in some of your mid-tone whatever it is. Um, and then once you start to have a good sense of that new kind of added light to your picture, then you can come in with that like final highlight hit. So it's kind of a two stage hit right now. Um, remember if you were just trying something really quick and you were just trying to get an indication of shadow, sure you only need a dark, a mid tone and like a good highlight. But remember we're here to we're here to really push the realism. We're shading clothes for real, right? This isn't about shading for a cartoon appearance. So again, you're gonna have different steps, different scales of value, um, literally going from one ruffle and then transitioning into another as it forms around that corner. So you can see now I'm adding in just a little bit more light and this is, I'm gonna be so like precise about where I put this. There's really only like a couple spots that I really want to emphasize coming out. Um, less so on the left side, because again, remember we're already talking, left side has a lot less light than the right side of this dress. So more so on the right and you can kind of see it with those three ruffles that I'm pushing out right there. And now we go in and you can make your final correction. So this dress is basically almost done. Could I go in and add a lot more detail? Of course I can. I can push this thing around for hours and hours and hours and get something hyper-realistic. Um, but I feel like what we achieved right now in this amount of time is really, really good. Um, and I think it's a good starting point. Remember guys, if you do want to know a good way to check, is this believable, is this working, just push it back. 
look at it nice and small, which I'm going to do here in a second, but it's probably going to zoom through. Yeah, nice and small. You can see that it has a nice realistic appearance. And if that looked good to you, then you're good to go. You created something believable. Guys, really quick, I just want to say thank you so much. I just hit 500 subscribers the other day and I couldn't have done it without you guys. I know this is only like halfway to meaning anything on YouTube, but I'm proud of it. I thank all of you guys for getting me here and I hope we can keep rocking together. If you guys have suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I want to keep creating some of this content that you asked for. From here, all I'm going to say is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.